Now let's take a look at some examples of completing the square. In example one, we're going to complete the square on this equation again. If you recall, the first uh, step is to kick out the constant term, which in this case is 11. Now the purpose of that is to give us some room to work with here. Step two of our completing the square process is to factor out an A term if necessary. Well, the A term in this equation is a 1, so there's no need to do step two. Step three is to complete the square. And again, the whole point of completing the square is to make x squared minus 6x plus something a perfect square trinomial. Now the b term in this part of our equation is negative 6. We're going to multiply the negative 6 by 1 half, which is negative 3. Then we're going to go ahead and square the negative 3, which is 9. And that is the completing the square process. Now the whole point of completing the square again is to get this number right here, 9. If we add 9 to x squared minus 6x, we will get our perfect square trinomial. Now remember, if we add 9 to our equation, we also have to subtract 9, because 9 minus 9 is 0. Now let's go ahead and simplify things out a little bit here. So step 4 of the completing the square process is to factor our perfect square trinomial. So x squared minus 6x plus 9 factors into x minus 3 times x minus 3. And lastly, 11 minus 9 is 2. So we're going to add 2 to our product. Now the last thing we're going to do is we're going to rewrite x minus 3 times x minus 3 as x minus 3 squared. And now we have successfully completed the square on this equation. Now I'd like to bring something to your attention. If you notice, in our completing the square process, we get a negative 3 before we square it. Well, notice what else we have in our parentheses here. We also have an x minus 3. Coincidence? I don't know. We'll see. Now let's complete the square on this equation. If you recall, step 1 is to kick out the constant term, which is 7. Now step two in our completing the square process is factor out the a term if necessary. Well, if you notice, the a term in this particular equation is a two. So we are going to have to do step two and factor out this two. Now the reason why we have to follow this process is we want to get a perfect square trinomial in here. And if you look at the 2x squared, notice that it is not a perfect square. So therefore, this part of our equation will never be a perfect square with this 2x squared right here. So if we merely factor out a 2 right here, we'll be left with x squared, which is a perfect square, and then we can proceed. So let's factor our 2 out now. So y equals 2 times. Well, if we factor a 2 out of 2x squared, we're left with our x squared, which is our perfect square. Factor 2 out of a positive 8x, we're going to be left with a positive 4x. And let's not forget to add 7. So now that we've factored that 2 out, now we have an x squared here, which is a perfect square. So now we are able to get a perfect square trinomial here when we complete the square. Okay, so let's proceed to step 3 and complete the square now. If you remember, we need to take the b term of this part of our equation, which is a 4. And we want to multiply that 4 by 1 half. Well, 4 times 1 half is going to give us 2. And then go ahead and square that 2. So 2 squared is give us 4. And now we've successfully completed the square. If you remember, the purpose of completing the square is to get this number right here, 4. 
So if we add 4 to our equation, we now have a perfect square trinomial that we can factor, and we have successfully completed the square. But let's not forget that if we add 4 to an equation, that we must subtract 4 to our equation. Now we must be really careful when we add a number to our equation here. Because if you recall from step 2, we factored out this 2 right here. Well, if we distribute this 2 through, 2 times 4 is 8. So what we really did, we really added 8 to our equation. So if we add 8 to our equation, we have to subtract 8 from our equation as well. Well, please make note of this. Whatever we factor out in step 2, in this case a 2, we can multiply that number to what we subtract from our equation. So in this case, we subtracted a 4, we factored out a 2, so negative 4 times 2 is going to give us the negative 8 that we need. So again, please make special note of what we did right here. Okay, now step four of our completing the square process means we need to factor this perfect square trinomial and simplify. Well, we get two times x squared plus 4x plus 4 factors to x plus 2 times x plus 2. And then we're going to add 7 and negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. Now finally, we're going to rewrite x plus 2 times x plus 2 as x plus 2 squared. So our final equation is going to be y equals 2 times quantity x plus 2 squared. And lastly, 7 minus 8 is negative 1. So now we have successfully completed the square on this equation up here. Now before we proceed to the next example, I'd like to bring your attention to one last thing. After we multiplied the 4 by 1 half, we got the number 2 inside our parentheses within the completing the square process. Please notice where else we have a 2 within our parentheses. Coincidence? I think not. And for example 3, let's complete the square on this equation here. Again, step 1, we're going to kick out R1. And again, we're doing that to give ourselves some room. Step 2 is factor out an A term if necessary. Well, we have an A term of negative 3, so it is necessary. So we're going to get y equals negative 3 times. Well, if we factor in negative 3 out of negative 3x squared, we're going to be left with our perfect square of x squared. If we factor in negative 3 out of a positive 9x, we're going to be left with negative 3x. And then don't forget to add 1 to that. Okay, now to step 3, complete the square. Well, the b term of this part of our equation is negative 3. So we're going to take our negative 3 and multiply it by 1 half. Well, please remember how to multiply fractions. We're going to divide our negative 3 by 1. So negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. 1 times 2 is 2. And then we're going to go ahead and square our 3 halves. Well, negative 3 squared is 9. And 2 squared is 4. So the number that our completing the square process reveals is 9 fourths. So now we're going to go ahead and add 9 fourths to our x squared minus 3x. And we're going to go ahead and subtract 9 fourths. And again, we're remembering that we factored out a negative 3, so I must multiply negative 9 fourths by negative 3. Now after we've completed the square, now it's just time to factor and simplify. So we're going to get y equals negative 3 times. Well now I need to factor my perfect square trinomial. But I have a positive 9 fourths here. How do I factor that? Well recall that I've been bringing your attention to this negative 3 halves. It just so happens this perfect square trinomial factors into x minus 3 halves times x minus 3 halves. 
because I know that when if I multiply this out, I would get negative 3 halves x minus 3 halves x, which, when added, gives me negative 3x. As well as, when I multiply negative 3 halves times negative 3 halves, I'll get a positive 9 fourths. So this indeed does give me a perfect square. And that's the nice thing about the completing the square process is that it will always give you a perfect square. So now to simplify, we're going to add 1 to our product. And again, recalling how to multiply fractions. Negative 9 times negative 3 is going to give me a positive 27 divided by 4 times 1, which is 4. And finally, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite my uh, product, x minus 3 halves times x minus 3 halves as x minus 3 halves squared. So I'm going to get y equals negative 3 times x minus 3 halves quantity squared. And now I need to add 1 to 27 fourths. Well, if you recall, we need a common denominator. So I'm going to rewrite 1 as 4 divided by 4. So now to add the fractions, 4 plus 27 is 31, and my common denominator is 4. So I'm going to add 31 fourths. And now I've successfully completed the square on this equation up here. You're probably thinking to yourself, what is completing the square good for anyway? Well, we're going to take a look at this in the next corncast.